Good evening. Hi there. TGI Friday, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It is summer. My name is Lana. If you've been following me this week, I'm having little nourishing love bites to share. So give me a thumbs up. Let me know who's here. If anybody's here with us. Today I was reflecting upon inner wisdom and how do you recognize your own inner wisdom? So a quote from Yogi Bhajan, remember this, any person who's impulsive and reactive is destructive because when you are using your impulse to react, you're not using your wisdom at all. And anytime you are not using your wisdom, you, your wisdom, oh, sorry. And anytime you are not using your wisdom will ultimately be totally destructive. You, you want me to read that again? So the quote is, remember this, any person who is impulsive and reactive is destructive. Because when you are using your impulse to react, you are not using your wisdom. And at any time you are not using your wisdom, you will ultimately be totally destructive. Now, this is interesting in the times that we're going through right now. One of the other things that Yogi Bhajan teaches is that when you are emotional, you are irrational. Now take that in for a second. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? We're not coming from a neutral position. We're not seeing the situation for what it is. Our emotions have come to surface because something underlying those emotions has been triggered in your life. Anytime we have trauma, it's going to sit in the subconscious until it gets healed. So if something externally occurs that reawakens the, the hurts and the pains from the past, you're going to be triggered. And what happens is you become emotional because now it becomes personal. And the only reason it becomes personal is because we make it personal. And when we can see the mind and see, oh my gosh, this is reawakening an old hurt within me. This is why people band together for a common cause because they feel it as if it's happening to them again. And of course, what happens is we, by nature, want peace, want harmony. And so we'll seek to help others where we may not be willing to seek to help ourselves. So going back to when we're emotional, we're irrational. We also are in a place where, where we're not balancing the hemispheres of our brain. We're not chemically balanced. Another small little tidbit, and this is gonna sound silly, but it makes so much sense. We're 70% water. When we are emotional, Yogi Bhajan says, drink water. Sounds silly. It's kind of like, you know, count to 10. But in essence, because we are 70% water and our water represents our emotions, we're influenced by the moon, the push, the pull. So the closer the moon is, you know, there's that ebb and flow. We feel it. We feel emotions come more to the surface when the, the moon is in different phases. And this is why it's so important to go within and to sit with your emotions and your feelings and what's going on inside of you. So yeah, drink water. Doesn't that sound kind of silly, but make sense at the same time? The first time I heard that, I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think about that? I'm the first one to turn around and tell you, hey, we're 70% water. You have to make sure you're hydrated properly. So going back to this, as far as recognizing how easily physically we are influenced by the sun and the moon, the earth, the energies around us, we take in all of this. Um, 
we really need to be able to discern what is our own inner wisdom and what is being influenced externally upon us. So I can say whatever, but unless it really resonates with you, it's not your inner wisdom. So if I say something and you don't feel it in your physiology, you don't feel it, then it's your inner wisdom hasn't connected. Because when I say something or anybody else says anything that you feel like clicks, it's like, oh yeah, I totally get that. I, that's, it's because I've reawakened or someone has reawakened your inner wisdom. You already know, you already have this information. The inner wisdom that we have, the intuition, our soul, our heart and soul, recognizes it when we see it. Now, the mind, again, we go back to the monkey mind, can get in there and go, oh, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. It's not rational. It's not what I've been conditioned. It's not what they say out there. You have to remember to kind of talk to that and challenge it and go, well, wait a minute here. I'm feeling this in my gut. I'm feeling this in my heart. My body's reacting to this. I get you. We know this. We've heard this. But we might want to consider another way of thinking. And so, again, there's that vibrational connection. So a lot of times we'll hear something and go, oh, I feel like I knew that. And it makes sense and it clicks. Inner wisdom has kicked in. All it has done is it's like it turned a little switch and it's like, oh, I'm awakened. Okay, I get that. But we don't always recognize and go, oh, I've known that. We haven't paid attention to what is going on within. So um, some of the other ways to tap into your inner wisdom. How often do you sit and meditate? And it doesn't mean you have to sit in a meditative posture. You can be sitting in a car, sitting in a chair, but you really need to sit with yourself every once in a while to know yourself. How about the gut feelings? Like, I feel like something doesn't feel right. Those are indications that you are, you know, your body's going to react beyond where you're ego mind is going to flip in in on the mode a lot of times we sense things before they're going to happen but we kind of brush it off like how often you go out the door and you're just like i don't know something doesn't feel right today and you proceed and then something happens you go oh my gosh well that made sense but it's usually after the fact it's not during that initial approach to your day that you stop to go okay if something's feeling a little off, why don't I sit here with this? Yes, exactly. In fact, they say the space between the inhale and the exhale is where you can quiet the mind the most as far as meditation goes. So yeah, when you feel something's a little off in your day or starting out, take a few moments, drink some water, Make sure you're breathing deep down into the belly and be aware of that breath. Again, the breath is gonna calm the mind. And really feel into your physical body. What sensations are moving throughout it? I mean, we can go into different areas are gonna represent different things that may come to surface. And that's another, another conversation, but just again I like to put my left hand on my heart and my right hand on my stomach and just close my eyes and I like to connect with my inner child I also like to connect with my inner elder wise woman and also my teenager self I try to cover all the bases but ultimately I ask what is this trying to tell me what is happening right here what wisdom do I need to know in this moment that's going to serve me. And breathe into that space and allow yourself to just relax, soften the shoulders down, soften the neck, ask the body to relax because the body will listen when you ask it to do something. It will respond better if you speak to it with kindness and love and compassion. 
Relaxing the hips, relaxing the jaw, relaxing the eyes, even relaxing the head and the cranial area and the ears and the jaw. And be surprised, the messages that come in, the first things that pop into your mind when you calm the mind through the breath, deep belly inhales all the way down into the pelvic area and then exhaling all the breath out slowly and just focusing on where the breath goes, how it rejuvenates all of the cells, how it relaxes you, focusing in and up at the third eye bringing emotion out of the equation and just focusing on the breath, becoming neutral and sitting with what is in this moment right here, right now, and asking for any wisdom and guidance that is available to you. And when it may not come right away, you may not get answers popping into your mind. But the key is to just honor a quiet space for you. Because the mind can easily distract you and take you on, on a uh, roller coaster ride. And you can get caught up in the chaos that's happening in the world. But you only have control of what's going on right here, right now, with yourself. And the more you work on you, the more you're able to hold space for others, to be able to pray for those you care about, pray for the earth and the world, and what is going on in the world. Because ultimately, when we contribute to what's going on by getting involved, by joining the crowds, you can actually lose sight of the inner peace easily. Stay on your path. Stay on your journey. Tap into your own inner wisdom because that is what's going to uplift, uphold, and support humanity in this time. Good things are coming. Be grateful for what you have. That's where you need to focus your attention. Your wisdom resides within. When you go without, you go without. Have a wonderful Friday evening, sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for joining me. Many blessings. Night.